Good evening, I'm meteorologist Wes Owenstein in Raleigh, North Carolina with a special edition of Tracking the Tropics. Some breaking news tonight as our 25th named storm of the season has now become the ninth hurricane. That is now Hurricane Delta. NOAA Hurricane Hunter aircraft have been in there for the last several hours down in the Central Caribbean. They continue to find a stronger and stronger system. And tonight, as the plane was leaving, headed back toward mainland United States, they found winds of 75 miles per hour, gusting to 85 miles per hour. As you know, to become classified as a hurricane, winds have to be at a minimum, minimum of 74 miles per hour. So again, 75 mile per hour winds at 8 o'clock Eastern time from the National Hurricane Center, gusting up to 85 miles per hour. The pressure continues to drop, and as you know, the lower the pressure goes, the more intense the storm is likely to get. And that pressure has dropped just as the winds have skyrocketed in the last 24 hours. If you think about it, this system was a depression yesterday. It had 35 mile per hour winds at 8 p.m. Sunday. Now at 8 p.m. Monday, we're up to 75. It is a slow mover right now, west northwest at eight miles per hour. From this point on, as the forecast has this possibly becoming a major hurricane, there will be more or less nonstop flights from the Hurricane Hunter aircraft. Very important information. A little bit of a wider view and a loop over the past 24 hours. First thing I always like to do when we're talking about a developing system is just kind of step back and look at the satellite structure. As we look at the historical path of where this system has come in that yellow line versus where it is right now, and you look at the satellite structure, remember some of the storms we've had this year, some of the really bad ones, they've been symmetrical, they've been round, we've been able to see that eye on the satellite. We don't really have any of that yet, but over the past 12 to 18 hours, it's starting to get that more circular structure. It's starting to get more symmetrical. It's over some very warm water. The upper level winds are very conducive to further development. And unfortunately, I think this is going to be a huge uh, disastrous storm for who's ever in its path. Again, 75 mile per hour winds. These are the latest statistics. The latest forecast track didn't change at 8 o'clock. Remember, those only change four times a day at 5 a.m., 5 p.m., 11 a.m., 11 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So the continued track will move it to the northwest, pushing it toward the resort towns of Cancun and Cozumel. That's where it could be Wednesday morning, maybe even tomorrow night as a Category 3 hurricane. So the amazing intensification expected to continue possibly making landfall for the first time around the Yucatan Peninsula, then moving into the Gulf of Mexico where it could weaken. And while that would be uh, a big story, overall it would still be a hurricane of 110 mile per hour winds as it makes a turn more or less to the right or the north headed for once again Louisiana. We've had nine tropical systems make landfall in the United States this year as named storms, tropical storms or hurricanes. This could be the 10th, and it could happen anywhere between the Louisiana-Texas border and the Florida panhandle sometime on Friday, again, as a Category 2 hurricane. Storm surge, winds and heavy rain all becoming major problems in addition to the threat of tornadoes. And if this all sounds familiar, this part of the world has already been hit a few times this year by hurricanes. Then dissipating and heading up to the Tennessee Valley, spreading rain across the middle and eastern part of the United States. So we're going to be talking about this through the weekend, and it's only Monday. I know a lot of us around the country are enjoying some amazing fall-like weather. Unfortunately, that's about to change. Computer models, again, it's early on in the system's life, just forming yesterday, but there's a lot of agreement as it kind of threads the needle right between Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula, keeping it over some very warm water, and then a little bit of divergence. Remember, when we look at the computer models, we don't pick our favorite one. We look at where the cluster is going, and a lot of the cluster brings it out into the central Gulf of Mexico before turning it to the north. So going forward, and the other thing we watch when we look at the computer models, we'll look at where the trends are taking this. And again, a lot of them are honing in 
on eastern Louisiana, somewhere around maybe Mississippi or parts of Alabama. And again, Sally, Laura, remember those storms very recently? Those could be a problem now as Delta heads for the Gulf Coast. Here's one bit of good news, and this is something we'll watch for intensification or de-intensification as it approaches land sometime on Friday. We all know this time of year, the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico has some really warm water. But over the past few weeks, we've had some pretty strong cold fronts. And with the past storms, we've had some upwelling of cooler water. And although it's kind of hard to see, there are some slightly cooler water temperatures in the immediate coastline of Louisiana. That's one thing that could help keep this from becoming a major category three or worse storm. So that's one thing we'll watch. We'll have all week to do it. Delta is not alone. Gamma is still out there as a depression. Believe it or not, remember, this is where Delta is going to go right toward Cancun. Just on the other side of the peninsula is Tropical Depression Gamma, which continues to weaken, will most likely move inland and become post-tropical in the next 12 to 24 hours. So not a player in the whole big scheme of things. Unfortunately, it's bringing some bad weather to our friends in the Yucatan Peninsula, those resort towns I just mentioned. But the bigger picture for the United States this week is going to be the 25th named storm this season. Can you believe how far we've come since Arthur formed before the season even started June 1st? We have now checked off Gamma and Delta this week. Next up on the list is Epsilon. Of course, we don't have anything else cooking right now, but our near record season continues. I say near record because 2005 continues to hold the record for most named storms ever. In a hurricane season on the Atlantic side at 28, we're at 25 as of today. And remember, the season doesn't end until the end of November. And if you think to yourself, well, it's October, there's nothing that usually happens. Well, it's not as busy as August and September. But remember, October is the third busiest month in the tropics on the Atlantic side. So we will continue to keep an eye on both Delta and Gamma. This is a special edition of Tracking the Tropics. We will continue these all week long right here, both at 2 o'clock and 8 o'clock Eastern. Continue to keep an eye on the tropics. We'll be here keeping an eye on it with you. For the meantime, have yourself a great night. I'm Wes Hohenstein, live in Raleigh, North Carolina.